Welcome to my tutorial on the binary number system. In this video I want to cover a few different things. First I'll revisit our number system and explain how it works because in order to know how to do binary we must first fully understand the traditional base 10 number system. And next I will try to explain how to take numbers from our system and represent them in the binary system. And lastly I'll show you how to transfer our alphabet into binary code using uh, ASCII code, which is fun once you get the hang of it. Um, so let's begin. With the tri uh, traditional number system, also known as base 10, yeah, yeah, I, I know you all learned this in kindergarten, but just bear with me for about two minutes here because I'll explain everything. Uh, in base 10, we have 10 digits or symbols that represent a different amount of objects. If we have no objects, we draw a circle symbol. If we have one object, we draw a vertical straight line. If we have two objects, we draw kind of a loop symbol to represent it. With three objects, we draw a rotated M to the right, and so on and so forth until we reach nine. Um, well, what happens when you want to represent ten objects? Well, uh, if we ke uh, kept up the same pattern, we could represent ten with any symbol we wanted. Um, that hasn't already been used by the number system, like a square, for instance, or a triangle, or even a palm tree. Well, however, we don't use a base 11 system. In our number system, in base 10, we only have 10 symbols to work with. So this would seem impossible unless I told you about placeholders. So with placeholders, we can combine our symbols to represent amounts over 9. So we create a tens place and a ones place. And we can say that we have one tens, or ten, plus zero ones. And if we wanted to represent eleven objects, we could say that we have one ten plus one one. Uh, to represent twelve objects, we can say that we have one ten and two ones, and so on and so forth, until we hit ninety-nine and eventually have to add a hundreds place. But you get the idea. So, if we have 10 symbols or digits available for use in base 10 and the binary system is a base 2 system, well, that means that we have two digits to work with in binary, and those numbers are 0 and 1. Uh, how do you count these large numbers using only two digits, you ask? Well, I'll show you using placeholders. In base 10, we have our placeholders incrementing by multiples of 10. Uh, 1 times 10 is 10, 10 times 10 is 100, 100 times 10 is 1,000, and so on. Uh, in base 2, we have our placeholders incrementing by multiples of 2. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, and etc. until we hit 128. And we stop at 128 because when we're talking about computers, the system is an 8-bit system, and each placeholder is a bit, so the total number of placeholders is equal to 8. So let's take a look at an example of this new method of uh, counting by using the number 123. In binary, this is how the number looks. 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. A couple of things to note here before I show you how I got this number. One thing is that in our traditional number system, it's considered silly to put a 0 in front of 123. However, in binary, it's essential to fill the 8 bits or placeholders up. This is why you see a 0 in the 128th spot, and I'll explain what that number means in just a second. Uh, but the last thing I want you to notice before we move on is when you add up all the placeholders that carry a 1, you will get our number, 123. And the same exact amount, yet a different rep uh, representation visually of that amount. So let me now show you how to go from 123 to that monstrosity down there at the bottom. First things first, we need to uh, write our placeholders down, and then next what we'll do is look at the, the leftmost placeholder, which is 128. We say, okay, does 128 go into 123? Well, the answer to that is obviously no. Uh, 128 does not go into 123. So what we do is put a zero in the placeholder for 128. Uh, just like you would put nothing in the placeholder for 1,000 when dealing with base 10, obviously. So now we move on to the next spot, to the right, which is 64, and we ask ourselves, does 64 go into 123? Well, the answer is yes. So we put a 1 in the placeholder for 64, and then we subtract 64 from 123 to get 59, and then we keep going. Does 32 go into 59? Well, yes, it does. So we put another 1 in the placeholder for 32, 
Uh, and then take 32 from 59 to get 27, and then we keep moving. So does 16 go into 27? Why, yes, it does. <laughs> so we put a 1 in the placeholder for 16, take 16 from 27 to get 11, and we repeat, we repeat the same process again until we have a remainder of 0 eventually. Um, you'll always get a remainder of 0 when you hit the end. But before we move on, I just want to point out that if we were to represent a number that hits a remainder of zero before you get to the last placeholder, that is fine. Just remember that no numbers can go into zero and you know, put zeros in you know, the remaining placeholders to the right. So congratulations! You now know how to represent numbers from our number system in the binary system. And I'm now going to show you a cool and fun way to use your newfound skill to communicate with your friends. It's called the American Standard Code for Information in Interchange, also known as ASCII. But before we do that, let's look at what we already know. With base 10, also known as the traditional number system, learning this over again would require you to sit in on a kindergarten class. With base 2, known as the binary number system, practice makes perfect, and you know we will get some more practice with this method in just a moment with ASCII. But let me give you some background on this, uh, this code first. It's a 7-bit character code where every single bit represents a unique character. Uh, control characters like escape and tab, printable characters like numbers, letters, and symbols, and many more. The numbers range from 0, which is the null value, to 255, which represents the Latin small letter Y with a uh, diaresis. But you know, all we need to know for today are the two following two things. Our knowledge of binary code and where to start. And the characters we will be using are just the uppercase characters, which start at 65 with A and stop at 90 with Z. So I was trying to teach my little sister this a while back, uh, and she picked it up pretty quickly. So what I'm trying to say here is, with no offense to my little sister, of course, is that if she can do it, you can do it also, and I'll show you how to do it right now. So this is the message I want to send to my sister, and yes, before you ask, I do love my sister very much. Um, I, however, don't want anyone else to see this message, let's just say at first glance, so I'm going to encode it using ASCII. The numbers that correspond to the letters are as follows. 73, representing the I, uh, the 76, 79, 86, and 69, representing the L, O, V, and E, respectively. And uh, finally, the 89, the 79, and the 85, representing the Y, the O, and the U, respectively. And I'm sure you know where I'm going with this by now, but let's just keep it slow for a second, because you need practice with binary, and I'm sure you just learned it like a minute ago, so you definitely need some practice. Well, we can't write I love you using our number system. We need to convert these numbers into binary. So let's start with the first one, 73. All right, so I wrote the uh, placeholders up at the top there just to help us out with this one, but eventually you will have them memorized, I'm sure. Uh, feel free to follow my work at the bottom as I explain what I did because I'm going to move through this example pretty fast. So, okay, we look at the first spot and ask, does 128 go into 73? No, we put a zero in the 128th place and move on. Does 64 go into 73? Yes, so we put a one down in the 64th place and take 64 from 73 to get a remainder of 9. Let's keep going. Can 32 go into 9? No, we mark a 0 in the 32nd spot, and the same for the 16th spot because it can't go into 9 either. 8 does in fact go into 9 once, so we can put a 1 in the 8th spot, subtract 8 from 9 to get 1, and we move on once again. 4 doesn't go into 1, 2 doesn't go into 1, but 1 indeed goes into itself once, and we can put a 1 at the end to get a remainder of 0, and we stop there. Oh, and one last thing. Look at our result. 1-1 one, one plus 0-2s zero plus 0-4s zero plus 1-8 plus 0-16s plus 0-32s plus 1-64 plus 0-128s gives us a grand total of 73. <laughs> well, there you go. It's good to get some practice with this method as much as you can if you want to become a Quaker at binary conversion. Um, so now let's do the rest. <laughs> Just kidding, that would take way too long. Uh, here's what it would look like if we continued. 
And it's a lot faster to convert from binary to traditional method because all we need to do is add up all the placeholders that carry one. But knowing the other way around is just as useful. Uh, now you can send this message to your girlfriend or boyfriend on the next Valentine's Day or something. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video, and I hope you were able to follow me. Um, you know, it's difficult at first to tackle binary, but try to finish the example to give yourself some practice. Practice, well, I guess it makes kind of close to perfect, so have a good one. Good luck.